Okay, I have worked really hard on this word. And I mean, I have just loads, just whole notes, just loads of notes. But um, that's why I have to take this to the Father because there's so much I want to say. And I just submit this in the Holy Spirit to Yahweh in the name of Jesus Christ. That the Holy Spirit just speak through me. Just speak through me in the name of Jesus. And let it not be my words. Let me be an empty vessel. That would just be able to flow um, whatever the Holy Spirit would want me to say. Because there is a lot to say. Like, so much. I just trust that the Lord Jesus would put this video in front of who is um, in the right season, the right moment to watch this. Because there is much, much, much before... This prerequ prerequisite is much, 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 many years, many months, especially many months of going to the Lord, pouring out, crying, reading scripture, abiding in the Lord. So I just ask in the name of Jesus that the right, this falls on the right ears because the Lord committed me to make this channel, although I didn't want to. It's for the body of Christ to glorify the Lord Jesus and whatever else he wants to do. But through my own experience, it is brought this and the Lord said other people are going through things right now that are similar but are different it all goes back to hearing the word the Lord's voice okay um and so because the Lord hand crafts his own voice through um what he wants you to do for his will which is ultimately for his glory that comes through union that comes through um, a, a God ordained marriage, a God or like a, and the body of Christ, I believe when it functions properly, um, it is to, to edify and to mobilize the rest of the body. So while I can listen to a word of a testimony and there's so many beloved people on here that I want to name, the Lord had me go through all of them, um, that he has given me along the way, even before I made this video that helped me along the way because um, he's not going to tell me the full answer he, but he's going to give people's testimonies along the way to help me get to the next to the next it's about the process it's about the process um and so i'm not i'm waiting just i'm waiting for a specific results um uh specific you know thing that i prayed for um but it's not finished yet and the lord told me to show the process of it um, and I know a lot of you women are going through the same thing, and maybe even men. But he wanted me to read um, Matthew, uh, I'm sorry, Proverbs 25, 11. Proverbs 25, 11, which is, um, I wrote everything down but the key verse. Um, which is, a word fitly spoken is like, I'm just going to have to paraphrase. A word fitly spoken is like golden apples and silver settings, okay? A word fitly spoken is like golden apples and silver settings. I've always loved that that um that 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 proverb from the Lord. Um and I just want to go ahead and say that after I watched a couple of videos and I even listed it on here, I wanted to say turn the captions on on this video while you watch. The Lord wanted me to say that. Um I watched Jaron Humphrey's Ask Again video, which was the video of the Golden Apples, which was on 4 4 20. And then I watched, um, I watched, um, another sister in Christ, AJL, 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 and she did this on 4 2 20. So we got, you know, the Lord had been giving me fours and twos. Um, and she said, Proof God is real. God told me who my husband was in my dream before we met. Um, and so, watching this, I just, the Lord just started downloading things in my, in my mind just so quickly. I watched them, you know, over and over. And I just started writing through so much scripture. And he really wanted me to focus on Proverbs 25, 11. Um, and this is for the buildup of the body of Christ. A lot of us are lacking that specific, you know, Everybody wants a specific word. And, you know, the Lord is, he does speak. And that's a lot of what I try to, you know, minister to people is he does speak. We are his mouthpieces. And the body is supposed to help each other, 
to better um, be able to not only edify each other for the kingdom, but to get um, to, to win people to the Lord Jesus Christ. So, um, anyway, four, it was definitely 420 is a lot. 420, 420. Um, and also, he wanted me to break this down. So, um, let's break down the sentence, okay? I, when I was studying this, I did not think this was going here. I did not think that this was going here. The Lord told me to study each of the words and to look them up in the Greek, okay? So, um, 444. Y'all can glean off of this. I've been getting 444 a lot. Glean off of this and take what you went. Take, take it to the Lord in prayer. Um, let's see. I want to start with the word setting. A, a word, a word fitly spoken is like golden apples and silver settings. This was written by Solomon, King Solomon, who you know wrote Song of so Song of Songs. Okay. Um, setting number forty nine oh six in the Strong's Concordance. The word is mascus. Mascus. It, it, it. The definition is a showpiece. A figure and imagination. It's noun feminine. Carved images. Um, the Brown Driver's uh, definition um, is an account. I mean, an ancient rock carving. An ancient rock carving. Specifically carved figure. Um, the uh, number 7906, which, you know, is another uh, another root word, is secu which in the Hebrew, so we have, let's stay on track. This took a lot of hours of doing this. So a proverb, um, a, a word fitly spoken is like golden apples and silver settings, okay? At the right, in the right setting. So a, the a Hebrew word for setting is CQ, which means a city near Ramah an outlook, a high place. Rhema means to get high. I know that's funny. The Lord, uh, the Lord has been showing me 420. Like both of those videos I watched before this, they were both, you know, released on four, four, uh, 420. They made 420. Um, but to get high, this is what, the, you know, I'm not trying to allude to anything, but this is just, you know, the Lord knows how to speak to us. Four, uh, Rama, a city near Rama, is where this root word comes from. So, Rama was the center of Jerusalem, where all the prophet, where Samuel got his prophetic words from. The center of it. Uh, it's a it's a high place. Now, every other place that I looked in the Word of God that used setting a uh, carved image, a specifically carved rock, a specifically an, an ancient an ancient rock. Um, it was used as a bad thing, a negative thing, like an, idol an idolatrous symbol, an idolatrous imagination, a high and lofty thing. But here in this proverb, in Song of Sol Solomon has done this twice, actually. He's very good with his words. He, sp he uses puns. The Lord is the great artist. And he, this was inspired by Song of Solomon, by Solomon, who wrote Song of Solomon. Um, so... Um, the Rama, a city near Rama. Okay, that's so that kind of encompasses the setting. Well, that's the setting. A word fitly spoken is like golden apples and silver settings. Okay, so let's move on to the next word the Lord wanted me to study. And I've been getting rock, 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 rock through so many scriptures. Um, the next word is fitly. So, fitly. That would mean the circumstance is right. The condition is right. Number 655 in the Strong's, Ophen, noun, masculine, condition, circumstance, a turning in the right circumstance, in the right season. So it's like a word in due season. But this word fitly, y'all, if you really look and study this, I, the Lord will show you. But this is, this is like, I got a whole new picture of what this means. Um, it's also a wheel. If you look in um, the word fitly in the... Um, and the concordance is Othen, number 655. Like I said, it also means wheel. It's a wheel. It's a circle, okay? It's a circle. So we have a setting in the right conditions, the right place, the right time, the right person, the right word, the right propose, the right um, promise, the right, you know. So fitly, 
fitly, a wheel within a wheel. The Lord has been giving me four by fours, four by fours, okay? The wheel is four by four, you know, four wheels, okay? It also refers to Revelation 50 verse 4, uh, 50 verse 5, I'm sorry, Revelation 5 verse 5, 4, Revelation 5 verse 5, um, when it says um, that the no one was worthy to open the scroll, but then behold, the line of Judah, I'm going to have to paraphrase, was found worthy, the lamb that was slain, and surround he, the center of the throne, and surrounding the throne were four creatures, four living creatures, you know, all singing holy, holy, holy. Anyways, this, this fitly, fitly, um, a word fitly spoken at the right time, this means it is a wheel. It, it's a, a wheel within a wheel. A wheel within a wheel, okay? Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, it's a wheel within a wheel. You can look at that as unity. As um, um, I also thought of it as a, a, uh, the bride of Christ, the unity. Um, so, with the body of Christ, um, a wheel within a wheel within a wheel. You know, a testimony within a testimony within a testimony. The, li the word is alive and active, Hebrews 4.12, okay? So, we've got the word um, setting. Um, which is, like I said, it's a specifically carved image, a rock. Um, usually, usually it's an idolatrous symbol, but in this case, only in this case where I found that it is used in a positive way. It is used in a positive way in this one occurrence that Solomon uses it as. And he knows that it is usually used in a bad occurrence, in a, in a negative way. But here, in this formation of this proverb, this is the exception to the rule. This is used in a positive way. And in not only a positive way, but a specifically crafted way that every single element is perfectly in line for this thing to come to fruition. The word is, is perfectly timed, perfectly thought of, perfectly like there's a, a million things that had to happen for this to come forth. Okay? Um, so, there, I'm already at 12 minutes. Oh my gosh. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, Lord Holy Ghost. Um, uh, Solomon also does this in Song of Solomon, verse 4, verse 9, and Song of Solomon, verse 4, verse 10, but that's, an, that's the story for another day, um, where he uses a negative word that's always connotate, con, it's always related in the Word of God with a negative thing, except in this one occurrence. He does the same thing with another word. It's ravished. Um, um, let's see. Yeah, the Ram Ramah was interesting because that's where, uh, that's where Solomon, uh, Samuel got all of his prophecies. Um, so we've got a word fitly spoken is like golden apples and silver settings. Now the word apple, that is the other word that I decided to look up. The apple is a, is a, it's a golden apple. It's a nail, it's a masculine in the Strong's. It's masculine. And so we're looking at the apple going, the apple going into a setting at the right time, the right time, the right place, the right time with a specific word. Okay. Um, let's see. Where is, okay, apple. It is, um, oh goodness, where is that at? The apple, I'm from just doing it from memory, um, is, means in the Hebrew, Breath, fragrance. Um, also, the apple is a golden apple, so it could be referring to uh, an, or an orange. A lot of people see it as that. Um, the man, and we all know the man was formed by God by the du the dust. It was formed from the dust of his mouth. Um, so we have that apple, that golden apple, in the silver, in the perfect setting, fitted at a perfect time. It is perfectly. So I have the setting as a feminine word, the apple is a masculine word. Um, and so, <laughs> rock and roll, let's ride. That's what I was gonna name this video. So any, oh yeah, a word on wheels. The proverb is said to be a word on wheels. That's how perfect it is. Like it is, that is what one of the commentaries said, is it is like a word on wheels, a circle. It's a wheel within a wheel, a wheel within a wheel, okay? Um, this all came from the Holy Ghost because I'm not smart enough to figure, to do, to know this. I'm telling you, this took me meditating on the word of tw Proverbs 25, 11. And um, I just want to include the body of Christ in this because 
we work together, you know, if we're operating properly to read what the Lord's assignment for us, share it with the body of Christ. And that mobilizes, that word isn't just for you, it is to share with someone else because they are going through something similar and the Lord has a word for them. So if you have received, you know, something from this, you know, write and say, at least write and say, you know, um, you know, I did receive something from this. The Lord did speak to me, whether it was a rebuke, whether it was, um, you know, an edification or a confirmation, um, just so um, we can be building each other up, okay? And I can connect and, and get back to you because he connects certain people. Um, also, I want to read Matthew 24, and he said, this is um, the ladies first. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they did not find his body, they came saying they had not. They had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those, verse 24, who were with us at the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. Um, ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into glory? That is what Christ said. Um, a word fitly spoken after the matter and season and other circumstances is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. Um, a vessel is also a vessel, so we are vessels as well. Um, Bishop Loth observes that Solomon in this sentence gives us not only an apt description of the proverb or parable, but also an example of the thing described. He means in these words, the weighty and hidden meanings are as much commended by a concise and well-tuned speech. Um, in his 24th lecture. So, I'm going to have to end this soon. I knew it was going to not be enough time. Oh, Holy Spirit. Um, and circumstances that suit it is another word to say it. Um, so, and it should be tested as well, whatever word you receive. Um, theologically, a more balanced understanding of God's word would, would include testing what a person believes he or she has been led to do by the Spirit of God. Um, let's see. Compelling truth. So, um, like I said, go and look up, because this was amazing to me. Like, these revelations were blowing my mind when I was looking up what I, what this represented to me, this word, like this 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 picture that Solomon is painting I'm like this is amazing like I cannot believe that this is what I'm seeing here and I've read, I've read this so many times um uh, apple a golden apple in a silver setting at the right time a form the word was formulated specifically for a right time in a specific setting place um a specific um a carved Im well, a carved image specifically carved uh, which is kind of women represented it's also imaginative it's lofty but in this case it is like the dreams almost of the lord jesus or imagine you know um uh you know something that you've been really wanting um and praying for to the lord jesus um for his divine purpose um, through this, you know, unity by the, the body of Christ. Each one has her twin is um, in Song of Solomon. Um, but the, the word settings, be sure to settings, the word fit, fitly, the word golden apples. Um, it's, remember, it's written by Solomon. It's written by Solomon who wrote Song of Solomon, who did have all of the Lord gave him wis all, uh, all of the wisdom. Um, and this is really this word really I wanted to make for the women, and um, I have right. We have some men sneaking in here. You know who you are, um, trying to look behind the veil. Um, the one that peeked and said he was blushing. This is somebody um, on YouTube that was kind of funny. It was a, a member of the body of Christ, um, trying to peek in. You know, because like a great song of Solomon that'll make sense. Um, it, like I look, he looks at me through a veil that was dim, but, um, you know, trying to find out what's going on. Um, so read Song of Solomon 4, 9, and 4, 10. Those, read those two scriptures. I think you might be surprised in those, um, but let's see. Um, the servant's obedience. The Lord God, this is verse uh, 4 of Isaiah 50 has given me tongue of discipleship to sustain, to sustain the weary with a word. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to listen as a disciple. So, um, I'm writing this, um, cause, and I also want to give a shout out to 
um, the girl that I just watched her video, and she really encouraged me uh, to make the videos through the process. It's something God had already said to me. Like, I've been thinking it was one thing. Now I don't know what it is because um, the Lord specifically told me something. Um, and I got just get discouraged, but the Lord is like, Noel, here's this person on YouTube to remind you. And I'm not kidding. Like, it was specific for me. Specific. God speaks specifically. Um, she made these videos about the process because it's been, you know, I forgot her name or I would have put it on here. Um, I know her name is Lisa. But I made this in obedience to the Lord, and I could make it for an hour. So I hope that this, this comes through and I can make more. And um, in the name of the Lord Jesus and all of his glory. Um, so y'all just be sure to connect and um, write something. And I will, because uh, God specifically wants to use us in the body of Christ to edify us. Because he is raising up people that are specifically hearing from him. And like he is real, he does speak. The Lord Jesus is creator of all. And he, he's, in, he's in our lives. He wants us to, to go with him in our lives to pick our, uh, to to ordain marriages, to ordain uh, just everything. So, uh, y'all, um, be blessed.